absolutely amazing. Aviation history fascinates me. Uh, the actual flight on the paramotor, being Wyoming, the air was quite spicy and a lot of control inputs, but I got to kind of route myself off the notes of what the former pilots did and go straight <coughs> through the station. And you could see the arrow and which direction it showed you to turn. And that was kind of a surreal experience because it was the same view that a pilot probably saw nearly a hundred years ago. And this storm just came through and it's raining now. And uh, we're just reading up on all the history here. As you saw, we found a bunch of old former METARs, meteor meteorological weather reports on this um, teletype paper and somebody had physically typed that in there a long time ago. 1931 was one of the latest dates that we found. And to think that that was still up in there and we found that in this building. So if you're always worrying about airmail, it, I'll post down some history on it. And especially this one, but just on a, a complete national level, the amount of work that went into trying to get mail to its uh, delivery area the fastest. And it was essentially a race between airplanes and trains. Planes weren't flying, they were only flying during the day. And then they said, like, hey, this isn't gonna work, we need to fly them at night. And that's when these towers came into play. So these airmail pilots were flying in unflyable conditions is the best way to put it. Some of these stories are talking about guys flying in these blizzards where they couldn't see and they barely saw the light of this tower to guide them in. That's incredible to me. I mean, these guys back then, uh, aviation is a tough field in general. And today it, it has made it so much easier now because we have a, a thing called an iPad. It, it's so many redundancies. Back then, there were no redundancies. Navigation was so primitive. Compasses kind of worked, but really it was line of sight and pilotage and f ground referencing was their biggest, uh, essentially, guidance. Railroad tracks, a lot of the stories were there, they used railroad tracks to navigate. Then they put in these cement triangles, as you saw, and that was in the early parts of the late teens to 20s. And then they put in the tower for light because they needed to fly at night. So some guys flying, you know, a <coughs> army surplus biplane that had a very questionable engine. It's blizzarding, whiteout conditions, and he has got a thing full of mail and he is more than determined to deliver this mail. This light and this tower in conjunction with this arrow was his only reference to keep him guided on the correct route. There's so many possible ways of getting lost out here, and that happened quite by often. By the iron compass, the railroad tracks below. The post office demands that they fly in all weather. The pilots say it can't be done, and then try to do it. In the early years, about one in ten airmail pilots is killed. There are accidents and forced landings at a rate of two a day. Darling, I am sending this to you by air mail, so I hope it will reach you by week's end. I can't wait for your return when I can hear all the stories of your trip. 1922. Coast to coast, mail goes by air in daylight hours, but on trains by night for safety's sake. It takes 83 hours for the plane train relay to reach San Francisco from New York. The first air-only trips cut that time by more than half. To 33 hours. The quest for speed is made safer when the Postal Service equips its planes with radios and landing lights. To guide night flyers, beacons are set up typically every 25 miles. Wow, look who it is. All right, out we go. It's a silly salamander. Keep in mind, there is a lot of wind today, so you're going to hear half my audio and half probably not. It's like 40 miles an hour. But we have arrived to something that I flew over. Wow, what do you think? So cool. It's a little windy.
Okay, so I'm hiding behind here because of the wind. It is gusty like you wouldn't believe today. Like really gusty, 40 knots is what I think they said it was. But this is the tower. And this was the power station. Essentially, there's a generator in here that brought power to that tower and it worked the rotating beacon. Another interesting fact about this, and you'll see in the aerial video, that is a triangle. That, that is essentially is the guidance triangle for the pilots. They would be flying over this mountain range and they'd be coming this way and they would see it from the air, this triangle, and that would point them to the course that they were supposed to go. It's incredible how these guys navigated a hundred years ago. Like today we have it so easy with four flight, distancing, compass, wind correction. These guys, when I say that they are like the true aviators, there's nothing that'll compare to these guys and what they did. definitely going to climb this tower. The amazing part about this site that I've done as far as research, research everywhere else is that this is one of the only intact airmail route stations. Majority of the routes, there's probably I think 300 or 250 triangles now. This is site number 32 on the West Coast Cheyenne route and I'll post that route in the description. But this out of all the sites as far as the navigational sites this is the most well preserved and intact and what i mean by that is that the powerhouse is still standing keep in mind this is almost 100 years old this triangle was put in 1920 and this tower is still intact i mean you're talking 100 years of elements and this is still standing it's, it's my, absolutely mind-boggling to me. You know, I'm like, what are you smelling there? Anything good? I'm walking through in case the structure is a little shaky. What do you think this is from? Look at these cabinets. And here's look at all the power station. Um, it could be the lens off that light because it's. Look at the power grid. Oh wow, it's still intact, kinda. Look at the breaker system. They would essentially, to apply, like, wow. oh my God, look at this breaker like system. Oh, that is so cool. Power light switchboard, Cleveland. What I'm shocked is, I mean, how long this thing has been in the elements and like, you can still see the, wow, so this is the power There's a jar here. Where? I don't know what this is. Oh. Let's see what that is. Um. There's a piece of paper right here too. It looks quite ancient. What does it say? Tubes for amplifier. KG Schwo. Date three of twenty eight. Are they talking about nineteen twenty eight? 
Not 2028. <laughs> what? There's another piece of paper right here. Is this like, uh. We should look this person up. Someone's name, KG Choice. Choice, okay, <laughs> I'm down. A lot of times stuff was stuffed in the walls, too. So this must have been like a, a coat rack. There's a more stuff in the cabinet tree. Oh my god, these are like meat, these are like uh, Morse code METARs, Meter they were air weather, what the heck does this? I put, there's one down here that says 31, but I don't particularly want to oh. stick my hands. Oh my way. god, so we're finding a bunch of these. I put two of them up here too. They're like METARs, if in aviation we get a weather report known as a METAR. And it'll report the time, the date, the wind direction, the type of weather, the dew point, if there's rain, the winds, I mean everything. And it's in this kind of like code. There's literally a bunch of these METARs. And this date, wow, this is nuts. I gotta do some more research here. So, we just found one of those printouts. I try not to break it. This is nuts. If you want to see history by just digging, it says December 15th, 1931. <laughs> 1931, and it's still showing up on this piece of paper. So, I'm going to try to get up in the roof area because um, when I observed it from here and looked up I saw a bunch of papers and I think there might be some dates and information on these papers up inside the rafters but how I'm doing it's kind of sketchy sketchy I'm like worried this whole thing's gonna fall in on us <laughs> so I'm gonna stand in the doorway yeah it's not a bad idea Not writing but papers is look at all these these are just and what's why I'm trying to grab these is because there's dates and information on them um, grab some more There's a lot of stuff up there. <laughs> wow. Thanks. Is that unlimited? What does it say? UNL? Unlimited or until 20? OMB clear. Until 20, calm, 5 below. Is that the weather conditions? I think so. Same here, too. Same kind of. Where some of these have the dates on them, don't they? I haven't seen one yet, but I haven't looked at all of them. This one says Rock Springs, December fifteenth, nineteen thirty-one. Wow. 
about three quarters of the way up. There's Stevie over there. Here's the windsock. You want to get a good idea of that. As you can tell, the paint is pretty worn away. This thing's actually much sturdier than I thought. For being up here almost 100 years, I think that's wood up there though, so we're going to see how sturdy that is up there, but we're going to keep going. Oh yeah, always.
the amount of crashes and the amount of fatalities is is in, they had a rough estimate that within the nine years of the air mail service nearly 40 pilots had been killed uh, that that number is that's a lot so it just kind of shows how dangerous this job was and it, there's literally reports that they called it the the suicide club and you know only the most desperate pilots would do this job and the most gutsy pilots I, it's definitely an era that I would have loved to have experienced. I don't know if I'd want, if I would have survived. These guys were just a different breed of their own and it yielded and produced some of the best pilots known to man. <clears throat> Charles Lindbergh was an airmail pilot. I believe Jimmy Doolittle even had some airmail experience. The guy that essentially was the founding father of all navigational aids, Jeppesen, was an airmail pilot and because of him getting lost so often that he started being diligent about taking notes and finding a better way to navigate because of the airmail route. Not to mention that it was this was essentially the backbone of communication in the United States for large stuff. Yes, we had a thing known as a telegram. Yes, you know, Morse code, all that was almost instantaneous as far as communications, but still, this was the main delivery system and this is what kind of kept America going as far as communication and letters and everything. So, at the end of the day, this is a major part of history of the United States as far as just general history, but then in aviation aspect, this is an absolute gold. And it's kind of sad to see that this is just sitting and rotting away. And I'm kind of determined now to see if there's a way to fix that because this won't be around much longer if it stays in the condition that it is. And this is one of the only ones that I know of that <clears throat> is still intact. There's a lot of cement circles around. And I'll post another link as well talking about all the cement uh, not circles, arrows guiding these airmail pilots. A lot, there's a lot of arrows around, um, quite a few. But one with an actual tower and the powerhouse and everything's still there, that's, th this is rare. So for me, this was an amazing sight to see from the air and then to go and explore it and everything about it. So thank you for watching this episode and I uh, really appreciate all the aviation knowledge that develops with you know my subscribers and I'm always learning something new and if you know a lot of stuff about airmail or have any insight please post down in the comments because this stuff absolutely fascinates me and I'm always learning something new so thank you for, for thank you for watching